Okay, a very quick turnaround, but um, we welcome now with us our defending champion, Xander Shoffley. I think uh, for me, Xander, all I can open by saying is, how does it feel to be back? Yeah, it's always nice to come back to a place that brings uh, good memories, or you have good memories at, and um, this is one of those places for me, so um, always nice to be on this side of the pond. And how does your game compare playing over here? Obviously, you, you played very well in one last year, but how does it compare playing in Lynx Golf, and, and how do you... How do you enjoy that, that sort of setup? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenge uh, growing up in the U.S. And, and coming over here and learning to play links, um, playing the ball down in, in severe wind and avoiding bunkers and taking your medicine when you do hit in the bunker and, and things of that nature. So um, it's always a, a challenge for us and something that we enjoy, or at least something that I enjoy doing. Very good. Well, we're delighted to have you back. And we will start with Sean. Uh, last year was... Three in a row, Travelers, I guess J.P. McManus, you won there, and then you won here. Uh, is that the best golf you've played in your life? Uh, from a re result standpoint, I'd say yes. Uh, we hang ourselves up on, or us pros hang ourselves up on how many wins we have each year, and uh, golf is a game of losers, unfortunately. So um, I guess if you look at it based on that in, in terms of results, then yeah, it would be a really, really good stretch for me. Do you have another time in your life that you actually think of as your best? Uh, I'd like to think that I haven't tapped into that yet. Fair enough. We'll go Martin in the front row. Uh, last year was um, easily the most difficult of the events here so far. Seven under par was the, the winning aggregate. What, what do you feel you did well last year? I mean, it was windy. What, what did you feel the strength of your game was in the, the four days? Yeah, just... Um, when it's really windy, uh, you have to position yourself correctly around the property. Uh, so, you know, to leaves, it's, it's hard to hit a lot of greens. Uh, when you do miss a green, you have to miss it in the correct spot. You just know some fairways are almost impossible to hit. And uh, like I said, some greens will be impossible to hit. So you have to really think your way around the property and you have to, you know, be willing to hit some un uncomfortable shots th uh, throughout the day. So. Or, or throughout the course of the week. Um, so, I mean, I, probably something of that nature. Well, one eye on next week, I mean, obviously the, the, the underfoot firm conditions is one thing. But do you want to get tested with the weather as well over the next four days? Would that be beneficial for next week? Yeah, I don't, I don't look too far. Uh, more of a day-to-day -day kind of guy. Um, I don't look too far, too far ahead. You know, I, I plan, you know, to be here and, and prep for next week, but my eyes are, are set on this week and, and mainly for tomorrow. We'll go to Ian over in the back left. Hi, Xander. Um, obviously, the, the hearings took place uh, yesterday. Um, I just wonder if you had any kind of reaction as to what we, we heard and what we learned from the, the papers that were released and just, you know, a general feeling of, of where we're at with, uh, obviously, some pretty uncertain times at the moment. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, it's sort of being on property here. It's, it's, uh, it's my job to, to play golf and... Um, I, I did watch, uh, in all honesty, maybe 10 or 15 minutes of it. I had to go see a physio and a trainer and, and, and get dialed in for, for today and, and the rest of the week. So um, we were sent a document, uh, the 276-page document, and uh, a link to the hearing. So um, I will do my homework. And I saw the hearing. I clicked on it. And it was about three hours. And I clicked on that about 10.45 p.m. last night, and I quickly exited out of it. Uh, <laughs> knowing that uh, I wanted to get some sleep in preparation for the tournament week. So I will listen to it, and I, I will probably not re read read all of it, to be completely honest, because it's not my forte either. So um, uh, it's hard for me to comment on, on everything that, that occurred because I don't really know a lot about of, uh, what was uh, talked about and what happened. But just in, on, on a general point, that the uncertainty that mm -hmm. is around the future of men's professional golf right now, is that unsettling? Um, you know, I think if if uh, if us players can can stay together, um, sort of stay unified and, and and have the right you know goals in place for the future, then it would be less unsettling. So I say, for the most part, uh, most of the players on the PGA Tour are, are are together and sort of want to be informed and and want to have a say in, in sort of what happens and. Right now, you know, with this hearing and everything that's going on, these are just sort of steps in the process to to getting, I guess, 
not what we want, but more transparency and, and, and sort of getting a, a seat at the table. You know, it's a four-members, uh, four by-members organization, and, and that's what it should be. Okay, to Alex over on the left. Uh, Xander, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, Jack Nicholas and Gardner Dickinson and some other guys decided that they needed to do something different as well and actually pulled away from the PGA of America, and, and that's how the tour started. Is there a possibility that you guys – collectively could sit there and say maybe there's a better way but maybe it's not the current path of the PGA Tour? We would need so much more information uh, to make that decision and also we're no experts. We're, we're really good at hitting golf balls and um, making big decisions of that nature or that gra uh, gravity is just not really what we're good at and um, you know for those reasons we do need help. And then Secondly, Jordan was just in here. His concern, outside of not being able to answer all the questions about the deal because nobody really knows what those are, his concern is basically the fact that the communication, alliance communications seem to be not really well, well open right now. Where they were previously during COVID, today it doesn't seem like there's that. Was sort of like, I have a pretty young tour career, but one of the rockier times on tour, um, you know, the guy who was supposed to, to be there for us wasn't. Obviously, he had some, some health issues. So I'm glad we got the memo. I'm, I'm glad that he said he's feeling much better. Um, but, yeah, I'd say he has a lot of tough questions to answer uh, in his return. And, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't trust people easily. Um, he had my trust. And... He has a lot less of it now, so uh, I, I don't stand alone when I say that. And and yeah, um, he'll just have to answer a lot of really hard questions when he comes back. Lastly, just sheer curiosity here: Do you remember exactly where you were when you found out about this deal? Uh, my wife woke, woke me up. I was laying in bed with my French bulldog. <laughs> we were having a nice little uh, nice little canoodling session, and uh, yeah. My wife woke me up in the pitch pitch black room and then and informed informed me of the news. I mean I had one of those sort of like I don't know who looked worse, me or me or my little guy, you know, I woke up and you know, I asked my wife to sort of tell me what where, where the news was coming from, like tell me, you know, what source it was and uh, it was like it was so early. I remember just laying there and I, I wanted to go back to bed and then, you know, I was kinda like laying there one I went I was like and then my phone just started going off, so <laughs> Unfortunately, I had to wake the little guy up and, and had to get my day started. He kept sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> That's the big news of the day, I think. Yeah. And just one more question over at the back here. Xander, can I ask, coming here to, to Scotland to, <coughs> to defend your title with the Open next week, is there a sense that, that you guys are getting a break from all the off-course focus that's been so much part of your daily routine now for the, the last few weeks, let alone yesterday with the hearings in the Senate, that actually you'll benefit from getting a break, playing a course you know, playing a course you've won well, but also just playing in a different country and playing a different type of golf? Uh, yeah, I'd say the best players in the world typically um, are pretty good at compartmentalizing and, and, and separating you know, one from the other. Uh, when, when there's something important to do, uh, which is usually hit, hitting a little white golf ball, that's, that's what we do. Uh, and when we're in tournament mode, uh, for me at least, you know, my brain sort of goes off and, and focuses only on the task at hand, whether it's a putt, a chip, a drive, or an iron shot. So, uh, yeah, it is kind of refreshing. It is kind of nice. And 
we're in a completely different time zone than, than when we're, we're, we are back at home. And, um, you know, if you just turn your Wi-Fi off and, and aren't willing to read any articles, you can sort of escape, uh, like you alluded to, uh, escape sort of from everything that's going on to the best of, of anyone's ability uh, when you're on this side versus being sort of back, back in the U.S. You know, uh, it's unsettling at times, but uh, to me, it, it's just part of the job. I feel uh, us players have a certain responsibility, um, being a being a member of the tour and an ambassador of of, of the tour and golf. So, um, you know, I love my job. I love playing golf, and you know, not everyone likes their. You know, you guys hate asking, or maybe most of you guys hate asking really tough questions. But um, it might might be a part of your job you don't like, and. You know, dealing with all this off-course stuff is part of the job that probably wouldn't be my favorite. So, like I said, it is part of the job and something that we have to deal with. Okay, we'll take two more. We'll go to Fatia and then finish up with Doug. Alexander, uh, do you feel any um, little peace or little um, harmony that this merge brought? Um, do I feel peace or harmony that the, the merger brought? Um you know, I try to be as, you know, glass half empty, half full uh, when it comes to this stuff. Um, thinking half full, obviously, that, you know, I'd say peace and harmony is definitely the opposite of what, what the announcement brought um, to us players for the most part. So, um, but like I alluded to or said earlier, I, I think in any tough situation, something good will happen. It may not seem like it when you're stuck in it, um, you know, knee deep in, in some bad stuff, but for the most part, you know, I do expect some good things to come from from everything that's happened, and hopefully, uh, it's it's us players sort of getting a little bit of more of that transparency that we've been asking for for quite some time. Okay, and lastly, with Doug, a couple uh, golf things. Burkdale, your first links test, or had you played before? Uh, Burkdale was my first open. That was a quick turnaround too, and in terms of getting in at the last second. Can't remember so long ago. You can tell me. Was it a quick turnaround? I, I would think so. Yeah. I don't know what the schedule off the top of my head. But I, I, I guess my point is it took you, um, I think you did okay that year, but the next year at Carnoustie, um, having a real good chance there. What, what was it about Lynx Golf, do you think, that you really picked up on quickly as, as different as it can be? You just don't have to be perfect. It's um, not that you have to be perfect anywhere else, but I guess sometimes when you play Parkland golf courses, um, you know, it's calm and balmy almost and you know you're, you're teeing off in the afternoon and you see someone shot you know seven on on the front nine and you know you you go out in the afternoon and you're like one over through five holes and you feel like you're gonna lose a tournament um with Lynx golf uh, there's way more variables that come into play with, with the weather and um it just can play a lot harder i guess and so if you can sort of uh, ride the ship and and play steady golf you know seven under one last year um you sort of knew 700 was going to win before the week started, you'd play the course a lot differently. Obviously, we don't know those kind of things, but you do have an idea with the forecast. You see rain, you see wind, and things of that nature. So you can kind of understand that you don't have to be sort of perfect or shoot ridiculous, ridiculously low scores to, to, be, to contend and win. Hang on. And secondly, I'm sorry, I just had a, had a blank there for a second. But when uh, when it when it's the last major of the year and you and you haven't won yet, won one yet, um, does that add any type of urgency to it, or do you look at the fact that you're still 29, and you got plenty more years, assuming you're still um, 29? Yeah, I just you know I, I really want to win one um, as much as anyone else, so maybe more, and uh, I just need to really. Just keep keep walking my my path. It's been different than everyone else's uh, that have won sort of at a really young age or or, or, or won a bunch of them. So I'm um, just trying to stay patient. And, um, you know, after you feel sort of let down after certain tournaments, you sort of go back to the drawing board, and sometimes that's not the best thing. Uh, we've been really close many times, and I just am asking to get, you know, get myself in those situations more and more, and I can guarantee that I'll win one. Um, not really. Uh, I was playing really, really good golf, uh, kind of leading into a point and sort of my, my body got a little crossed up, uh, starting on Saturday, I started hitting like snap hooks, which was something I haven't done in, in quite some time. And 
I really had to, and of course the course started playing a little bit harder at that moment as well. So I got myself in, in some pretty, pretty bad stuff, uh, swing wise and body wise. And mentally I stayed okay just cause I knew, uh, you know, not to panic in that moment, but yeah, you know, after starting off so well and, and being in such a good spot, feeling untouchable, almost, uh, golf is funny. It really knocked me down, uh, pretty far with that Saturday and Sunday and sort of how, how, how I felt about my game. So, um, after a week like that, I was kind of looking more towards the future than kind of dwelling on what happened and more so just how, how I can make sure that, you know, any sort of check or system of check that I can put in place to make sure I, I didn't get so out of whack uh, like I did. Okay, thank you, Xander. Good thank luck you. this week. Thanks. To watch another DP World Tour video, click here. And to subscribe, click here.